go from Q here, take it to this equation, and now look for solutions in Q and join I. What can I get? That's the kind of thing that gives you a thesis. So that's my thesis is that uh, a problem of that sort. Okay. So, so there is a lot to be said still in torsion subgroups over number fields. Here's an example of an elliptic curve that has a point of the largest order. You don't have to go too, too far to find those. <coughs> so here the torsion <coughs> is uh, of rank 12, of rank no rank. Uh, it's uh, of order 12, and uh, the generator is 0 to 10. Okay. And the interesting part of elliptic curve right here is that the torsion, the elliptic curves with some type of torsion, they are actually very neatly organized among all the elliptic curves, meaning that they come in one parameter families of elliptic curves. Okay? So if you want, for instance, to know what are the elliptic curves with <coughs> five torsion points, those are all neatly organized in one family. So elliptic curves with one uh, five torsion point. Uh, with one five torsion point are all of them in this family. It's one of these. have a five torsion point by Maser's theorem if there is a five torsion point then it is this one or that one so the torsion subgroup is either z mod 5 or z mod 10 mostly z mod 5 in the whole family the z mod 10 is a little thin in there but they are in there okay so uh, they come in this neat family by the way this shows why we choose to not put all the curves in uh, in short vital stress form, in this a little longer vital stress form, the coefficients are pretty nice. You try to force it, you really uh, uh, hang, uh, hang up that everything has to be in short vital stress form, the coefficients are a little worse. And if you are so inclined to work in characteristics 2 and 3, then not all elliptic curves in characteristic 2 and 3 can be put in short vital stress form. So you have to use one of these. So they they are perfectly fine. Um, models also. Algorithm. Yeah. So when you said t equals zero, do you get a singular curve then? Yes. That yes. That's why I excluded it. It's the only one over Q. The only <coughs> value you should exclude. And then the cos of the order. Oh, good question. So that is it corresponds to a cos in the modular curve that is that this is parametrizing. So this is parametrizing. This would be a model for. Uh, x1 of 5. Okay, so if you go to gamma 1 of 5, calculate how many cusps are there, the one with t equals 0 is one of the cusps, if there are a few. Yeah. You said the curve is one 5 torsion point, is that one only one 5 torsion point? Or can you have three or four points with? Oh, so, so, so good question. So if you have five, uh, if you have five torsions, then I have uh, so P is of order 5, mm -hmm. and then I have 2P, 3P, 4P, and 5P, which is O. Obviously, this one does not have 5 torsion. Yeah. Uh, for order 5, it's order 1. But this is uh, like Z mod 5, and if you play in Z mod 5, the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 have multiplicative order, uh, wait, no, no, additive order yeah. 5, right? So all Four of them are points of order five. Okay, but are those the only four? Or can I have a different group of like say? Oh, so so what? What? Yeah, uh, J, two J, three J, etc. No, no. So 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 <laughs> if you had another set, then you would actually have uh, a, a, a oh, C five okay. cross yeah. C five as a possibility. That you okay. Don't. Okay. You can have ten, and then there are also points of order ten. Uh, that, that get thrown in the mix. Okay, yeah, really. Right. Then there is the point of order 2, the point of order 5, and the point of order 10. 
but once there are five, there would be only four of them. Okay. Yes, so, so how, how do we find the torsion subgroup? So to find the torsion subgroup, um, I, I believe that's in the 30s, it was proved, and that's not major slash of major uh, hyphen plus. It's not one person, it's two people, and it's not uh, collaboration. It was proved essentially simultaneously by two people that they didn't know about each other. Okay. So, so if you have an elliptic curve and uh, bring it to short by the stress form, <coughs> So otherwise, the theorem is a little more difficult and not true. So, um, so you better bring it here. So you have it in uh, short by stress form, and let P not O be a torsion point on E. Then, first of all, what Jamie asked, uh, the coordinates are integers. Both the x coordinate and the y coordinate are integers, and that is already a huge relief. That uh, makes our life a lot easier to find them. But not only that, if the order is two, then those are easy to find because the y coordinate is zero and the x coordinate is a root of the polynomial in x. Okay, that's great. But about order is bigger than two, it also tells you this theorem is uh, it just gives you everything you need. If the order is bigger than 3, then these p's that came uh, to us as a discriminant actually divides the square of the y coordinate. No, the other way around. is divisible by the square of y. Okay, so I'm not gonna, uh, not gonna prove that, but let's let's take for instance that elliptic curve. We claimed before that it, there was just one point of infinite order. I'm talking about torsion, but I'm actually gonna prove to you that 3, 5 is a point of infinite order. How? Uh, I'm, I'm going to prove that there are no points of finite order. Okay? How do we do that? So, first of all, x cubed minus 2 is irreducible, so there are no points of order 2. This, this part, is, I put it here, it's not really part of what's usually called the nature of lots theorem. But it might as well put it in for complete for uh, completion. Okay, uh, but that that this part is easy to prove. That the point for the two, the x coordinate is a uh, root of that polynomial. Great. And on the other hand, four a cubed plus twenty seven b squared is uh, twenty seven times four. So y squared. If there is a point, y squared would divide 27 times 4 <coughs> squared in there. What are the possibilities? For y, the y coordinate would be, well, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, or plus minus 6. 
right? And then if you in turn throw those in here, then you get the possibility for x cubed. Okay, since y squared equals x cubed minus 2, then x cubed should be 3, 6, 11, or 38. I don't know a lot of cubes, but I know those are not cubes. So uh, this is impossible. So, no torsion. Okay? So, there is no torsion, but that, but I have a point on the curve. So, that point must be of infinite order there. infinitely many points. Which is something not trivial at all to prove that there are infinitely many points on uh, one given curve that is higher than genus 1. Okay, so the other possibility to prove things of that sort is you, you can, well, when you have a canon, you can use it if you have a uh, if you have enough ammunition. So, but theorems are, are plenty uh, of ammunition left to, to use as many times as you want. So, uh, what happens here? This theorem is telling you that any point over Q has at most order 12. So, if you take an elliptic curve, give, us, give me a point, and start doing multiples of P, and by 12 you've not reached O, then that point is of infinite order. Okay. So you can always test, like it's a, a brute force method, but you can test it like that, whether any point is of an infinite order or not using that. Okay. So, um, there is another method to compute, um, uh, to, to, com to, to have a sense of point of finite order that I'm not going to talk about uh, but it's in the section on elliptic curve or finite fields in chapter 2. We will get back and I'll talk a little bit about point, uh, elliptic curve or finite fields in the fourth lecture when I talk about uh, trying to get to the virgin generic diagram conjecture. Uh, in the one or two minutes that remains, we're going to change now uh, to start thinking of how do we compute the rank. And uh, uh, the answer is very simple, is that we can't. <laughs> but we, we, we do our best. Uh, so we have something that looks like an algorithm. We don't know yet if it's an algorithm. And even if it was an algorithm, uh, in, in, in practice, it takes sometimes uh, just so much time that we cannot finish it. So you have to find many shortcuts to try to fix this problem. Uh, but so uh, what is uh, the first problem one has to figure out is what happens? Uh, how do I know if I have a few points? How do I know they are linearly independent? So. So take E this very innocent looking curve and put a computer to work. Okay, let me let's let's just find points. Do you see points? Do you see any points or so? One, what? Zero two. Zero two. Yes, zero two is there. Okay, there's a lot of points on this curve, so let me list a bunch. There's one zero, and two zero, and zero minus three, and minus three minus one, and eight minus twenty-two, and minus two minus four, and minus one, 
uh, 3 minus 4 and 3 and minus 1 minus 4 and 1 minus 1 and 0 2 and 2 minus 1 and minus 2 3 and minus 1 3 and those are just integral points. If you start looking with denominators, you find a whole bunch more. 1 fourth, uh, 13 over 8, and so on. Okay? This is uh, a little bit overwhelming. Is there rank 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14? Is it like an elliptic curve of rank 14 with just a 7 and a 6 as coefficients? Yes. Okay. Um, that, that, this doesn't uh, sound right. Maybe, maybe it has a huge torsion subgroup, right? Those are all integer coefficients. Does this say this an if and only f? No, this just says this is smoking gun. Okay, this doesn't mean there's a gun. Uh, uh, so. We just see that there is many uh, integral points, but in fact, there is no torsion. Is this an elliptic curve around 14? No. It turns out the rank is just uh, is just three. <coughs> so it turns out that p equals uh, one zero. Q equals 2, 0, and rank uh, R equals 0 minus 3, for instance. These are generators. Okay, so that leaves a question. What on earth is minus 3 minus 1? Who is that guy? There must be some addition that adds up to that. Which one is it? And, I mean, this is the, the beauty of this addition is that completely not transparent of how points are added unless you start doing these constructions with a, with a ruler, right? So we will see next time how to tell uh, what is happening um, in here. How do I tell it will be that this guy is p plus q? How do I find that? And not just by trial and error, how do we find that? And how do I know that these points are independent to begin with? What if this point is 17 times p minus 25 times q? I don't know. Maybe it is. I don't know. So uh, we will, I unfortunately am running out of time today. Tomorrow we'll do that and try to compute ranks using the method of descent. By the way, just so what we will do here is heights. Uh, there is a concept of canonical height that will tell us exactly what is happening because if this was 17 times p minus 25 times q, 17 times p minus 25 times q has a lot of has large coefficients. There is no way about it. Okay, the height, so the number of digits in a coefficient in the x coordinate in particular, blows up at some point and pretty soon. And we'll see how we can sort of like quantify it. And that will give us a sense, uh, and exactly a sense of uh, what points are independent and what points are. Uh, <coughs> okay. All right. Yeah.